lights are on. It's all to race for. Him into turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's done it too. The lights are out and we're underway around the streets of Monte Carlo with George Russell looking like he's close to the lead. Has he managed to keep it there? Will they all manage to get through Sandoval? Unscathed just about, but there was an issue for the Uxie in the background. He's spinning, he's frantic up the hill, but George Russell's got the lead. Path Art to Leclerc with spinning in the middle, the Alfa Romeo collecting the two Mercedes in the mix as well. There, what a nightmare. Oh, he's gonna barge his way through. Charles Leclerc trying to edge his way through. It's all a bit Schumacher and Verts from 1998. And that is a ridiculous place to put your car. You'd never be able to do that in real life. Dodgham's time oh, now. Man. He's hit the Ferrari. He's hit the McLaren. And, oh, my goodness me. Amazing racing here. Can Alex Albon find the inside line and find his way to third position? No, he's going to be shown the Armco barrier. Can he make it work around the outside there? This would be extraordinary stuff. Nothing to separate these two. Red Bull versus Ferrari down the hill to the slowest corner of the championship. They're still it. side by side. I can't believe what I'm watching. And this time, somehow, Alvin just about gets ahead. George Russell dominates on the streets of Monte Carlo to win the virtual Grand Prix of Monaco by nearly 40 seconds. Hello and welcome to the G-Finity Arena, the home of F1 Esports Virtual Grand Prix. My name is Tom Deacon, a pleasure to have you with us. Two weeks ago, you just saw all of the drama from Monaco in that street race. Well, tonight we've got another street race for you. Our drivers will be heading to Baku in Azerbaijan. And joining me on the desk to talk about all of the action is Sky F1's very own Natalie Pinkham. Natalie, great to have you back. It seems silly to ask, but looking forward to tonight's race? Absolutely. We saw, as you say, so much drama in Monaco and I predict plenty Plenty more of the same in Baku. And actually, what's been really interesting to see develop is this real tussle for position between the drivers, Charles Leclerc, Alex Albon and George Russell. George Russell looking for his third consecutive win and just two races to go three points are in it. Yeah. So it is all to play for. I love it. We've got this championship, which doesn't technically exist, but people have added up the scores because that's how passionate they are about this. 100%. And we haven't had anything to talk about racing-wise for many, many weeks. And these things count. George Russell is giving timely reminders to the big bosses, particularly at Mercedes. Hey, look, come here. I'm talented. <laughs> I'm winning races. Indeed. Well, listen, great to have you on board tonight. Um, so, uh, listen, before we get down uh, to all of the nitty-gritty with Azerbaijan, it is new to the F1 calendar but it's already given us some memorable moments of skill, adversity, emotions. So let's have a little recap of all of those greatest F1 moments. The Street Fighters are in place and ready to do battle. <laughs> Could we race in Baku every week? There you go. Uh, some incredible, memorable moments there. Brake testing uh, stands out there. Uh, for you, Natalie, obviously been to Baku. Uh, what's it like? What's the emotions like? What's the energy come race day? Well, first of all, it's a stunning city. It's medieval. It's got a big mix of old and new architecture. It's lying on the coastline of the Caspian Sea. It's very windy, so that can affect the drivers. But as you say, it somehow delivers so much drama. 2017, as you say, the brake testing, when uh, Vettel went into Hamilton behind the, the safety car, 2018, we saw Ricardo and Verstappen take each other out. Both Red Bulls gone. And 2019, my goodness, George Russell goes over a, uh, what do you call it, a drain cover, yeah. sucks it up, gets massive damage to the car. So we're thinking, should racing go, even go ahead? And then Charlotte Clerk, who was absolutely locked on for pole, massive favourite, and then crashes at turn eight, which also took out Kubica in qualifying. And then you see the Mercedes lock out the front row and go ahead to win the race. I mean, there's been so much 
drama. And I expect to see some more tonight. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, George Russell hoping to make it three wins in a row. Uh, he'll be hoping that we've already checked with the game, no uh, drain covering. So it's absolutely fine Good stuff. Uh, uh, for that. Uh, however, back in 2016, um, the world champion, Nico Rosberg, will probably have some very, very fond memories. He was jumping up and down uh, with joy uh, after winning. I I'm delighted to say that he's joining us right now. Uh, Nico Rosberg, great to have you on the show. Are you, are you looking forward? Oh, well, first of all, how are you? Uh, are you looking forward to the race tonight? Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm actually in my cellar uh, <laughs> in, the, in the simulator to vibe myself. I was just driving around the circuit trying to get a good lap in. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the, to the race later on. Uh, now, I do have to say, Natty, you, you weren't here on the desk, but last time we chatted like this, Nico, you had a, a surprise visitor uh, walk into the room. I believe it was your <laughs> wife, Vivian. Uh, I feel like we should address that very early. It really took off on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I think because you just never know when you're online with this camera, you know, and she was trying to help me out, trying to film uh, with my mobile what I was doing, and it just went completely wrong. That's why he's locked himself in the man cave now. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Exactly, exactly. I, I hope you didn't get into any trouble. Um, listen, we look forward to the race tonight. Um, uh, it's surprising to see uh, such good racing from the likes of George Russell, Charles Leclerc. It, it's going to be nail-biting tonight, three points behind, uh, as we found out. Uh, George Russell, he's the man to beat at the moment. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's really cool also how there's no differences between the cars in the virtual world. So all those guys are similarly incredibly talented and George Russell seems to be uh, flying at the moment. Yeah, he's been dri been driving brilliantly and, and it, it's it, it's the way it is. I mean, he's an unbelievable talent. We know that and a huge, huge, uh, maybe even championship potential for the future one day. Um, so it's great that he's uh, laying down his mark now in virtual racing and I look forward to the battle so much. I mean, Azerbaijan is an incredibly difficult circuit circuit. Uh, so to win there, really, you've got to be on it 100%. Yeah, well, I tell you what, Natalie and I were just discussing it. You were definitely on it in 2016. What are your memories uh, from that race and winning it? Yeah, it was the first time there. Um, and I mean, it's one of the most difficult tracks in the world because you have so many high speed braking arrivals where you're like at maximum speed and you have this braking. And if you ever so slightly mess up the braking, you go straight off into the runoff or even hit the barrier. So it's really, really, really difficult on the braking there. And that's the, that's the most challenging part about the track about the track and I think in the simulator maybe it's even more so difficult to get those breakings right lap after lap Pwah. the big respect to those guys now actually Nico I went into labor very shortly after you won that race <laughs> so I think it was your oh, fault I'm very, that my sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry about that no, please don't be it was a great moment uh, for you and for me uh, <laughs> just um, just tell me how important it is for the racers at the moment to be to keeping their skills set sharp ahead of returning to racing in a month time yeah this is a very interesting question I if I was still racing I would be in the simulator every single day spending hours in there because I'm convinced that it's just it's still gonna help you a tiny bit to keep training your skills I mean imagine Roger Federer if he didn't train on a tennis court for like five months and he mm. would come back and the first day back he would be nowhere and the skill for an F1 driver it's the same and I think in the simulator you have a small chance of, of, of training some of that skill and, and keeping the level up. And therefore, I would be maximizing it. And it would be interesting to see because we see some drivers doing it more than others. And I wonder if they might have an advantage um, when the racing gets going again. I would bet on that, that they would have an advantage. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, I was just listening to the F1 uh, Nation podcast. Alex Jakes, our commentator tonight. It was interesting to find out about Lando Norris, that already the preparation has begun, going on an F3 car, maybe getting in a, in a car, just to feel what it's like again. Um, you wouldn't be surprised then if some of the guys that have been uh, sort of competing in, in the virtual world, uh, getting a little bit of an edge then? Absolutely. I remember so vividly my first outing after the winter break. And the winter break was always three months long only. And this is now five months. So the winter break was always much shorter. And the first run out, you can just feel how your, your capacity in your mind is just so much less. You're like maxed out just to trying to drive fast. You have no capacity left to like memorize things or start working on the settings. You just feel rusty. Um, and those guys are going to be feeling it too. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that every little bit you can do is going to help. Like even going go-karting as Lando is doing. Um, and I think the guys who are really trying to do their best in, in, in preparation are really going to have a small advantage. So what's your prediction then for this evening? 
Um, I'm going to go for George Russell again. He's going, he's flying, and <laughs> I think he's going to take it again. Uh, well, listen, Nico Rosberg, an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, it's great to see you weren't interrupted in, in your man cave <laughs> yes. uh, this evening. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you never know. Thank you very much, Nico Rosberg. Thanks a lot, everybody. And I've just got to say one thing, like huge respect to the simulator drivers because I'm driving flat out and I can't get within a second to them, you know, so it's unbelievable, the performance. Oh, well, there you go. Praise indeed. Thank you very much to Nico. Um, uh, it, it is, I mean, uh, he competed not that long ago in, in a challenge show here at the Gfinity Arena uh, with the likes of Nico, uh, um, uh, David Coulthard, sorry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, he was finding it incredibly challenging, but that competitive edge uh, coming through there. But he reckons George Russell tonight might be taking that win it's going to be exciting to see oh it really is and and make no mistake George Russell is really up for this they all are I mean it matters it really matters to them it's not just bragging rights this is this is about them asserting their positions with their peers and the team bosses okay well let's not forget the format uh, this is what is going to be happening tonight uh, we're gonna have an 18 minute qualification uh, then we'll have a 50% uh, race at the Baku City circuit equal car performance vehicle damage is off and we'll also have driver assists available. Uh, that's just because we've got a whole roster of different drivers, some with a lot of experience and some less so. Uh, but that's why it's so entertaining it, for, for everybody at home. I'm interested, actually, with some of the older guard have joined later, like Valtteri Bottas, for example. I'm interested as to why the others haven't. Is it because they're too concerned that they'll come in too late and, and not perform well against the likes of George and Charles Leclerc and Alex Albon? Because the, the, many of them will be just keeping one eye on this and thinking, actually, this is well worth an outing. Well, we have got some debuts coming up. Let's have a look at uh, part one of the lineup of drivers. And you can see him there. We spoke to him on the show uh, a little while ago. That's Pierre Gasly. He makes his debut tonight. And Gianluigi uh, Donnarumma, uh, the uh, AC Milan, the Rossoneri goalkeeper, made his debut when he was 16. So this guy knows how to deal with pressure situations. <laughs> he comes and joins. And then we have, of course, uh, Ben there, uh, teaming up with McLaren, uh, TM. Uh, Met Marduk, uh, very, very, uh, very consistent uh, content creator and also very good at the sim. Plus, it's going to be the battle of the goalkeepers uh, there, Thibaut Courtois. And as you can see here, a star studded uh, second grid here. I mean, look at that. It's great to see Anthony Davidson back in. I know we got a fairly late call up, so he's been he's been pushing hard in the last couple of days to get back up to speed. Um, but yeah, good to see Alex Albon back in. Sergio Perez, which is great, and Latifi and Oscar P P uh, Piastri was only in the race a couple of you know hours ago, wasn't he? Indeed, and, so of, and of course uh, the, the the sensation, the online creator, Mr. Jimmy Broadbent, uh, is is back. Plus, uh, Emmerich uh, Laporte, another footballer, join in, um, and uh, hopefully he can keep up to pace. And what is interesting is the Williams team keeping it consistent. Nicholas yeah. Latifi and uh, George Russell, once they they got started, they haven't looked back. And um, obviously, from their online streams, they've they've been really keeping up to date with everything. And clearly, they've really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, so this is live right now with everybody. Uh, some familiar faces, and, and for those of you who knew, uh, that guy bottom left in there, Mr. Lando Norris. I don't think he's ever left that room. I think that's where he sleeps 24-7. <laughs> uh, he is constantly online. Uh, uh, but, um, but obviously, the, the world is enjoying uh, being able to see some sort of competitive racing. But it is, it is coming uh, back. However, uh, some drivers have already sent us a little message. Uh, looking forward to the race, so we can take a look at that right now. Hi guys, I can't wait to be driving this weekend on Formula 1. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Renault for the opportunity. Uh, I hope I will race uh, good with, uh, with uh, Oscar and do our best. See you soon. Ciao ragazzi, sono un grandissimo appassionato di, di Formula 1. Per me è stato, è stato molto bello ed è stato un piacere allenarmi con Pierre Gasly ed essere suo compagno nella, nella scuderia Alfa Tauri. There you go, the uh, Italian international goalkeeper there. He looks commanding. You have to be big in goal. but because they... he's holding it, the phone down ah, here. Ah, that's yeah. what it was. Okay. I'm going to do that. <laughs> lean over the lens. <laughs> Note to self. Uh, so listen, we head to Baku. Uh, we know how difficult it is as a street circuit. Mm, but really fast, what... very fast. Is, is that the main difficulty? It's the second longest in the, the F1 calendar after Spa. Yeah. But what should people look out for? How difficult is it to drive on? Well, I mean, I've never driven on it, so... <laughs> but, <laughs> but you've run on I've it, though. I've run it many times, yes. 
Um, listen, it's a, it's a great track. It's a very fast one, as you say, uh, and a very long one. Uh, 360 kilometers per hour top speed. And it's that, that run in, the turn eight into the castle section that seems to catch so many of them out. As we saw in Quali last year, where Charles Leclerc was just nailed on for that pole massive pace advantage all weekend in the practice sessions and then couldn't convert it to pole because of a mistake that also Robert Kubica made at exactly the same barrier. Well, I tell you what, um, last week, in, uh, two weeks ago, sorry, uh, in Monaco, Avoltu Batas uh, joined us. Let's, let's look at his pole lap qualification yep. uh, in Baku and, and just talk us through it because I tell you what, this is absolutely sensational. I've watched this, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, he talks about hitting a sweet spot in this lap. Uh, everything went right for him. And it was a crazy session. Two lengthy stoppages, four accidents. As I say, Ferrari were absolute favourites with a significant pace advantage to take pole and lock out the front row. Big crash, though, for Charles Leclerc in Q2 at Turn 8. Same thought as Kubica. And Mercedes seemed to have compromised their laps by putting the drivers out into traffic. But Bottas got a good toe on that last lap and by the smallest of margins just 0.059 of a second ahead of Hamilton um, he took his second consecutive pole with Mercedes locking out that front row and Vettel who everyone thought because Leclerc had crashed out Vettel would would be on pole but he could only manage P3 0.302 seconds off the Finns pace and Verstappen in P4 for Red Bull which was actually his best starting position at Baku um, you can't see any traffic here for Bottas, but he just seemed to get it right on the day and pretty much surprised himself because all weekend, as I say, they'd been off the pace and then they just delivered when it mattered most and then converted that um, on, on race day itself. No, I'm not a squeamish person generally. <laughs> You're but, wincing, aren't but you? But I am absolutely wincing here because you, know, you, you watch it, you forget, you haven't seen it for a while, the particular races, and then you watch it again and you're like, the way that they are turning it into these mm. corners. And that's what tonight, in the virtual race as well, they'll be doing exactly the same. Uh, yes, those, those dangers aren't there. Uh, we're fully aware of that. I don't need to spell that out to people. But yet, they will be having to put their foot down and really pick up as much uh, as speed as they possibly can. And that's where incidents can happen absolutely but, but to watch Volta Bottas to be able to just sling it round there it, it's just incredible so you, we're gonna have that sort of emotion of watching uh, in, in, in a few moments time a, a bit like well any street circuit but a bit like Monaco you've got to find your groove at Baku and he absolutely did that day in quali but you as you say the smallest of mistakes lead to big consequences at a street circuit like that um, it is fast it is uh, uncompromising and he got it right, and it will be interesting to see who can do the same today. Well, listen, Natalie, I can't wait to uh, have you here down on the desk. However, uh, with me throughout the proceedings of tonight, uh, listen, uh, the commentators, of course, uh, we have to have them in board. Uh, Alex Jakes up there, uh, the F1 Nation podcast, been thoroughly enjoying that. Thank you very much, Alex. And Super of course, plugging. Super plugging. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing my bit. And uh, Mr. Matt Gallagher, an absolute pleasure to, to have you on board tonight. Baku, an exciting race. Yeah, it certainly is. It's a, it's a different mix. You've got the historic bit in the middle, the very narrow turn eight. You've got great overtaking opportunities. And for this field, there's George Russell to beat right now because he is a driver in form. All right. Well, listen, Matt, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, who are your eyes on uh, for a performance tonight? I'm just looking forward to seeing Russell versus Leclerc. This this three point deficit in the championship that's just uh, sort of sprung up is is fantastic to to be able to then see who comes out on top by the the final race next week. So for me, I think Russell. I think there's um, the, the Mercedes drivers are really quick as well, uh, which I'm sure Natalie will be very happy with with Anthony Davidson back on the grid. Uh, but here we are qualifying nine minutes forty to go, and George Russell is right at the top six tenths clear. Who's the chap in in P two? Uh, oh, three now. <laughs> it's, it's Alex Alban and then Louis Delatrust. But Lando Norris at the front of the field. And uh, Matthias Wagner has been disqualified for the session for being parked in a, uh, in a dangerous position. The Dakar Rally winner on two wheels uh, disqualified from the session. So disappointment for him. And uh, Jimmy Broadbent with a five-place grid penalty after colliding with the Manchester City uh, defender Americ Laporte. So, uh, George Russell, Alex Alban, Louis Delatraz, uh, Lando Norris, Nicholas Latifi, and Pietro Fittipaldi at the moment, the top drivers. Uh, yet to see an effort from uh, Charles Leclerc, yet to see an effort from the two Mercedes, and from debutant uh, Sergio Perez, who, of course, 
uh, is absolutely magic around here in the real thing with uh, some epic podiums through the years. As we check in with Lando Norris, currently P4, and uh, wearing the team colours and back out uh, with that pumpkin crash helmet. Got to love that. Absolutely love the helmet. And uh, as Tom said in the commentary, he's pretty much moulded to that seat, I think, now. Uh, which is, you know, it's great to see Lando and everybody else, all the other F1 drivers and personalities involved in this virtual GP series. Oh, yeah, that is frightening, isn't it? That <laughs> helmet is frightening. Uh, but he's up in P4, 38-0. He'll definitely want to get into the 37s. I, I had the pleasure of racing him yesterday with a few of the other drivers. And How did 30, go, uh, Don't want to talk about it, no, okay, but 37s fine. was uh, definitely the, the ballpark. And uh, actually... Uh, Esteban Gutierrez had been si uh, setting the time trial leaderboards alight with a 37-0. So he definitely has the pace. Can he deliver when he's a racing driver? So I imagine he has dealt with the pressure quite a lot as Pietro Fittipaldi is up in P2 now. Yeah, the driver who found his way to pole position one way or the other last time out. <laughs> Should we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the fact that uh, Albert P3, Delachaz P4, then Lando Norris over the line, DRS open. And it's always good to check in and see the driver's intensity. And uh, there we go, P4 for him, with some drivers in the pit, some drivers attacking right now. But George Russell, once again, looking to make it three in a row and doing so with a new fastest lap in this qualifying session. Look at his margin right there. 137.1 compared to P2's 137.4. Russell on form, on fire, loving life. What can Charles Leclerc do? I found it very funny. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> mate. Well, that's an out lap. It's fine. It's fine. They're not doing that in, on the proper laps. They were strict corner cutting. They cannot do that. <laughs> they literally cannot. Uh, but what I found really interesting yesterday, actually, on the stream was uh, Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris having a chat about how quick the other drivers were. Mm. Um, one of them being George Russell, another one being um, uh, Esteban Gutierrez. And, and they didn't sit, sound like they were particularly quick compared to them. They uh, were almost a little bit... Uh, uh, I don't want to say negative, but yeah, negative uh, about George <laughs> Russell and the fact that he was so quick. You no, know, they put uh, George Russell's put in time. He's enjoying winning, and fair play to him. As we ride on board with Charles Leclerc coming through turn one, and now turn two, they love to be so aggressive on the downshifts. Uh, they run a ABS, I believe, as well. Uh, the drivers because they they feel like it's a bit better of a feel. Uh, than with ABS off, or they just couldn't be bothered to put the time in to learn it, either way. <laughs> uh, but Charles Leclerc not doing too bad through these first few corners. Yeah, it looks very, very committed. Uh, hanging on to it a little bit through there, but steering nice and open as he makes his way through to the chicane now. The left and the right causes a little bit of chaos on lap number one, but he's managed to negotiate that nice and easily. Flame towers in the distance. Uh, the busy. racing point directly ahead. Uh, no mentioning last year as we breathe in and snake our way through with a little bit of a tap on the barrier, but no problems for him. Time to beat right now, 137-1. George Russell loves this track in real life. Uh, would have been a good candidate to do the double uh, in his F2 year, but uh, was uh, taken out of contention by Nick De Vries. Same thing happened to Lando Norris that year, vintage F2 year 2018. And a driver who knows how to win around here in F2 is the driver we're on board with, with a mega toe of Jimmy Broadbent now. Could get slightly close. Careful. Oh, little my. bit of wheel bagging, not the ideal qualifying line. That's cost him a little bit of time as he ducks back into the slipstream. So, Charles Leclerc, he's been bouncing off cars, off the barriers. Is he bouncing his way up the timing page? P18 at the moment. He comes over the line and he only goes up to 12th position. I would be absolutely fuming if I was Charles Leclerc right now. I'd love to see what he was saying on his stream because Jimmy Broadbent wasn't even on a lap, I don't think, because he hasn't set a lap time. So, Jimmy, I'm not sure if he's turned off his mirrors or something, but either way, he's down in P19, and I feel like some Charles Leclerc fans might have a few choice words to say to Jimmy Broadbent's stream right now. But either way, I think... I think Charlotte Club wanted to post that lap time, even though he knew it was terrible, because yesterday he didn't manage to set a lap time and he started at the back of the grid for the not the GP. So he doesn't want that to happen again. But down in 12th, that's not much better. Alex Albon coming off the back of a couple of fourth places after he went for the alternate strategy in Spain and uh, got involved in spins and the like at Monaco. Not his uh, easiest day behind the wheel. Uh, last time out, a couple of weeks ago, running nicely in P3, trying to improve, trying to go alongside his very good friend George Russell, who's really a long way out of reach for everyone else. Uh, George Russell 
uh, didn't win the feature race back in 2018. He came through from the middle of the pack to win the sprint the very next day back in F2. So he's always been handy around here. Alex Albans, another driver who's won around here in F2. And he's gone fastest of anyone with a 1.37. One very close, half a tenth ahead of his good friend, Mr. Russell. And uh, it's an all Haas row two with Louis Delatraz ahead of Pietro Fittipaldi. Alban, the pace setter. It's going to be a baptism of fire for people like Sergio Perez joining this series quite late. At 17th at the moment and a 140.1, but fantastic to see him getting involved. And there's been some hilarious bits of uh, video of him and Jimmy Broadbent chatting uh, before the race, chatting about the pizza that he had uh, with, with chips on top of it. And tuna and chips, I think it was, which... On a pizza? Yeah, it makes me feel a little bit sick. And, that, and that's, and that's Jimmy's, not... No, it's, uh, Sergio Perez had that. Yeah, what? Posted on his social media. You're joking. Uh, no, not joking at all, and a uh, little bit sick. Well, he almost, anyway. almost deserves to be <laughs> <laughs> after that sort of culinary choice. Yeah, I think it was in Italy as well that he had it, which was uh, one of the places you wouldn't have that. But uh, either way, 18th at the moment, Sergio Perez. Great to see him. No, it's great involved. to have him. Great to have him with us. And and he's only taken delivery of the of the sim fairly recently, so he's getting up to speed. He referred uh, when we were speaking to him about it. He referred to the kids. I've got to take the kids on. The kids? Yeah, he's not that old. He's, no. he's, he's not that old, but he still, yeah. he still considers Alban, Russell, uh, Norris and Leclerc as the, the kids in, in Formula 1. Let's see if you can improve. Currently in P18. And I uh, wonder if he's bringing it back to the pits. No, he's... Let's see, as he comes across the line. So Sergio Perez about to go on the attack. He did Two. improve, but didn't improve the, his position. So he's got into the 39s at least. There we are, improving with every lap behind the AC Milan goalkeeper, who's behind the Real Madrid goalkeeper. Lovely mix of talent in this field. Alex Alvin, the driver to beat. George Russell on an outlap. Louis Delatraz running slightly out of sequence. He's back in the pits. And Oscar Piastri, a name that might be new to you, but I think we're going to hear a lot more from this Australian driver. He's already been racing around here in the Formula 2 virtual races. He's going to be taking part in Formula 3 this year, which gets underway along with Formula 1 and 2 in the, uh, the Austrian circuit of Spielberg. Very strong P5 right now. He dominated the F2 race earlier. Absolutely, absolute class of the field, Oscar Piastri. And not surprised to see him in the top five at the moment, just behind Pietro Fittipaldi, who we're taking a look at now, a train of cars behind him. And this is the problem with Baku. It's such high speed that some are preparing their laps. They're on their out laps now, as you can see most of them. But then someone like Charles Leclerc, who was a little bit out of sync, clearly, with Jimmy Broadbent, at least, came flying up behind him. And you need to have that awareness, really, if you want to, to and the gap as well, in order to set a, a decent lap time. And great to see Alex Albon. I was slightly concerned that George Russell was uh, leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the field. But Alex Albon currently on provisional pole position. If they get into the 36s, they need to sign up to F1 Esports, to be honest, because they clearly put in the time. Uh, they've got auto ERS, which is cost you a little bit of time, as well as default setup. And they're only a second off the, the top people in the world. So terrific talent, and we're into the final 30 seconds with George Russell trying to retake the pole position that he held earlier on in the session. Alex Alban has taken that away for the time being. Look at that glare. <laughs> and a little pout as well. <laughs> He's ready. He is, he knows he, the he is in the him. zone, isn't he? He is in the zone and, and desperate to, to take back that pole position. Nicely judged through turn 15. Such an important corner if you are going to feature at the front around here. And exit of turn 16, so, so crucial. You should get crosswinds down there. The, uh, the Caspian Sea, just the other side, the right-hand side there behind the grandstands. And here we go then for George Russell. The clock has counted down to zero. Alex Albon currently holds provisional pole. Not much left to do for the Williams driver. Can he retake it? He can with his final effort, a 1.36.8. He is pumped wow. up. That is a super lap wow. from George Russell. And can Charles Leclerc do anything about it further back? We've had a yellow flag in sector two. Coming out of that zone right now is Charles Leclerc. So the top four have finished their times. Esteban Gutierrez getting himself up to fourth place. He could well be a factor. Uh, Charles Leclerc taking the... Uh, the wall-based line through turn 15. He will be hoping at the very least, Matt, to make it into the top 10. 
Well, down in 12th at the moment on a 38-5. Charles Leclerc not enjoying qualifying around Baku in virtual or in real life. <laughs> he's now flying down the straight. He's got nothing else to do. He can't gain any more time than foot to the floor as he flies towards the line. He really needs a top five if he wants to be challenging George Russell on a 36-8. Where does Charles Leclerc go? Only 10th into the top 10, but he'll be frustrated with that. Behind Lando Norris, behind his teammate today, Enzo Fittipaldi for the 137.7. And once again, George Russell, we said he was the driver to beat. He's had two wins in a row. We'll add to that a pole position as well. George Russell with a super lap. Good to catch so much of it as well as he has dominated on these streets. He's got a very serious competitor alongside in Alex Albon. So, but an excellent effort from George Russell, who will start the race from pole position. So there we go then, uh, just getting the updated results there. George Russell finishing uh, in pole position for qualification. Great work from Matt Gallagher and Alex J leading us through everything. A few surprises there. I have to say congratulations to Pierre Gasly, his first debut uh, finishing in P7. But again, George Russell proving uh, why everyone's talking about him in the sim world. Absolutely, delivering when it matters most. He seemed very calm, didn't he? Very focused throughout that session and just put in that really strong lap. The only one into one. 36 is right at the very end. I have to say, I'm surprised about Charles Leclerc um, only managing P10. Uh, but, you know, Baku is a circuit that you can overtake on. There, are, there will be opportunities in the race. So, uh, let's see. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I tell you what, I am disappointed for yeah. Giovinazzi because he's had technical gremlins pretty much through this whole series. Yeah. And he's so desperate to deliver, as they all have been. But uh, sad to see him leave the session. Yeah, let's have a look at the qualifications then, uh, the classification as we stand with it all then. Uh, so it's George Russell, uh, Alex Albon, Louis Delatraz, Esteban Gutierrez, Oscar uh, Piestri. Uh, earlier on tonight, had a fantastic race in F2, um, uh, uh, winning that actually in the yeah. future race. Uh, so could have a work from him. Jimmy Broadbent, though, uh, down there in 14th. Now, in terms of his results, uh, P4 in Bahrain, uh, finishing position, then P9, then P13, P18, and then P12, uh, are finally <laughs> in Spain. So he'll be wanting to get back up to that P4, which is that first race in Bahrain. And, and, and he's just such an icon in, in, in the world of, of sim racing. So uh, he'll, he'll have a target on his back a little bit. Absolutely. It's quite a mixed up grid, actually, when you look at that. It's actually saying that uh, Giovinazzi... It, has actually qualified in P11, so I don't know what happened then because it said he left the session. But um, yes, Alex Albon will be pleased with P2 and uh, Piastri. I'm really impressed that he performed so well and has come back and deliver again now. Well, let's have a look at the Baku track then. because this is where the race is going to be won and lost tonight, all those DRS zones uh, and detection area. And, and just to confirm, though, uh, today's Pirelli pole position uh, will be uh, given to Mr. George Russell. There he is right now uh, with his sim and rig there. And, and he was pouting, uh, for anyone who was wondering, uh, uh, confirming on the, on the pouts. But, um, there is a reason they call him gorgeous George down at Williams. Of course, and, and we're seeing the reasons there. Uh, so listen, um, interesting enough, though, we're back we talked about it, uh, turn eight is mm. that one they're going to have to be very careful on. It's so tricky. I mean, it's caught some of the best racers in the world out. I mean, obviously, Charles being the most notable one last year. Um, and uh, also, Robert Kubica, but I guess over to you. Yeah, and because we're being told we need to get to that race as our guys at home want to get to it as well. So over to Alex Shakes and Matt Gallagher. Thank you very much indeed. I'm really looking forward to this one because I think we do have a bit of a jumbled up grid. It will be interesting to see whether George Russell can take that qualifying form or whether Alex Albon is going to give him a real run for his money. These two very good friends in real life, will they be at the end of this race? They're not afraid. They're not afraid to do a bit of wheel banging, I think, especially around Baku. That's such a long back straight. So we should see some really good overtaking moves into turn one and probably some dive bombs as well. I love a dive bomb and I think we'll see a lot more uh, into turn one. And here we are, the predicted pit stop strategy. So soft to hard, so around lap five to eight, or you could go on the hard tyres and then pop the mediums on at the end. So there's two variations, but obviously the top ten. And what, soft. Matt Gallagher, would you fancy if well, you had the choice? Well, 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 what would I fancy? It depends if I have a front wing by the end of lap one, <laughs> but fortunately these guys uh, don't have any damage. They don't so have the damage, they don't go, have the problem. Go hard, softs and then straight to, to the hards, but 
Oh, no, go hard. I meant go softs. <laughs> uh, and then uh, fit the hards around maybe lap eight or so. It depends if there's absolute carnage, which we're about to see right now. I think we are. George Russell on the left, Alex Alvin on the right, Louis Delatraz in P3, Esteban Gutierrez in P4, Oscar Piastri has had the form in F2, can he show it in Formula One? It is time for the penultimate virtual Grand Prix of the year with two, three, four, five red lights in Baku. When they go out, will be underway on the streets of the Azerbaijani capital. And it's a good reaction time for Alex Alman. Can he pressure his mate down into turn number one? No, he can't. That's deep from Louis Delatraz to hand the position to Esteban Gutierrez. And of course, there are cars absolutely everywhere. This is Baku, for goodness sake. You knew that was coming. But it's Russell, Alban, Gutierrez, the top three. Delatraz went deep to lose a position. And they are the top four with Lando Norris in fifth, Pietro Fittipaldi sixth, then Perez gaining a hatful of places due to the chaos. Latifi in eighth. Andy Davidson ninth, Oscar Piastri taking P10, and can Albon do anything about the dominant form of the Williams in front? It's Russell versus Albon at the head of the field. Well, Leclerc was up to P6, I think, at one point, and then clearly was involved in an incident because he's down to P14. He must have been counting his lucky stars with the amount of crashes that were ahead of him. He got away unscathed through Turn 1, but Turn 2, clearly something happened. So George Russell right now in the pound seats to take the theoretical championship lead, but Alex Albon is going to fight him all the way for the victory here. 26 laps, and I believe we have softs for most of the front runners. It'll be interesting to see further down the field if people have gone for the alternate strategy and uh, we may see a different leader or so but look how quick George Russell is right now already nine tenths of a second to Alex Albon his qualifying pace is translating to race pace it certainly is issue for Enzo Fittipaldi because he's tumbled down the order there uh, having run in the middle of the pack and he's tumbled down well down the field to last so frustrating for him because he was in eighth position on the grid originally over the line to complete lap number one George Russell He's uh, not out of DRS range, but he's had a very strong opening tour around here with Alex Albon, another race winner, and Esteban Gutierrez, who's been on the podium a couple of times behind completing the top three. Looking down the field, uh, it's quite strange, actually, for me to be commentating over Tiamat Marduk, a man I've been creating content with for the last 10 years or so. We're out looking at Sergio Perez, taking up... The, going up the order to P15. It's going to be side by side potentially to turn one. Nope, round the outside. Lovely work from him. He started on the medium compounder tyres, so he wasn't looking at the predicted pit stop uh, <laughs> strategy because neither of those had medium tyres you're starting on. So maybe he'll go for a, maybe a 10 lap stint on the mediums and then pop on the hards. Or making maybe his, something different. Making his debut today, the Mexican driver, and I believe we can hear from Checo, who were recorded for us. Oh, he's into the wall there pretty seriously. He has managed to carry on, but let's, uh, let's hear here now from Sergio Perez. Hey guys, I'm very excited to be able to be part of the Baku Virtual Grand Prix. Uh, it will be my first experience. I just got my simulator uh, last week, uh, so I, I hope I can do I can do well around Baku. Uh, but for sure, I will enjoy some racing before the real racing starts. See you there. He nearly got to see even more of Baku, given the line through <laughs> the corner at the start. I don't think he enjoyed race. that part. Uh, <laughs> but it's a good job we weren't speaking to him live, otherwise that would be another victim. Yeah, that, that, that would have been blamed on us. That yeah, would have been absolutely. blamed. Uh, what a start to the race for George Russell. Uh, we said he was in form, but I didn't think he'd be in this sort of form. That is a sizable margin to take out over another virtual Grand Prix winner. Eight tenths of a second again. And Albon really needs to work hard here. He cannot uh, let Russell get out of DRS range. Yeah, it looks like he is closing in ever so slightly, although that has gone back up. It said eight tenths, it's now gone over just a second as DRS is now enabled and George Russell has the gap he needs for Alex Albon to not deploy his rear wing. And Esteban Gutierrez tantalizingly close to the Red Bull driver, but still not within DRS range. Then we have Lando Norris running in P4. What a lovely sight that is to see the McLaren driver not have any gremlins and running smoothly in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So he's running in P4, five seconds clear of Pietro Fittipaldi in P5. And Piastri, I was maybe hoping for a bit more from him after his dominant performance in F2, but still running in P6 in his, in his debut. Yeah, pretty good on debut from the young Australian driver. Meanwhile, out front, George Russell dominating things as he did in Monaco. Long way to go, though. But let's hear from the British driver. He's recorded another message for us earlier in the weekend. Hi guys, so we're here ready for another virtual Grand Prix, this time in Baku. 
Uh, looking forward to it, to be honest. Had two wins on the bounce, going for three. Um, didn't realise there was a championship on the go, but I now see that I'm a couple of points behind Charles, so obviously looking to rectify that. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Wish me luck and tune in. Cheers. George Russell is delighted to find out there's a championship on the line. It does not take a genius to work out that if the race finished like this, he's going to take the lead, and not just by a little margin, by a lot, going into the final contest that we have for you next week around the streets of Montreal. Well, the man-made... Uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, but close yeah. enough. Yeah, it's a man-made island, isn't it? The St. Lawrence Seaway. It's basically a street <laughs> You know, I got there in the end. It's lap four. Uh, we're focusing on the other Williams right now. Nicholas Latifi in uh, P7. And uh, he's ahead of Anthony Davidson after that late call-up. They're both trailing the young F3 driver, Oscar Piestri. Uh, Anthony Davidson uh, taking a big step forward and taking quite a lot of the curb on the exit of turn number one there. Uh, last time out, his best result by a long way with uh, sixth place. And he uh, doesn't have too far to go to try and improve on that. Strategy is going to begin to unfold in the next few moments. Latifi has been with us for all of the virtual Grand Prix, uh, ever present, backing us from the very start. And uh, he, once again, as we have come to expect, running in the uh, top 10, as he has done pretty much throughout uh, this. He's always been in the top 10 in the virtual Grand Prix, in fact. Uh, his best result uh, in Spain was fifth position. You could crown him the virtual GP OG, couldn't you, really? <laughs> he is uh, one of the guys that's been there from the start, and it's great to see, even though some results haven't gone his way, still very much loving being in the simulator and being involved in this series. Here's Charles Leclerc, P17. He's pitted already, and he's on the medium tyres, which means he's going to pit again. There's no damage, so he clearly thinks a two-stop strategy is going to be quicker for him to attack the drivers ahead of him, but I, I can't see that. I, I don't really know why he's pitted already, as the, the Renault wasn't particularly sure where he was going there, I don't think, <laughs> of Laporte, but uh, Charles Leclerc very easily gets through and up to P16. But, yeah, very strange on the strategy call there. I would have imagined he would have just continued on the softs and then gone on to the hard tyres. But uh, here's Jimmy Broadbent, currently running in P10. Yeah, and he's back after uh, taking a bit of a break for a race, and we can hear some team radio with uh, Jimmy Broadbent right now. Uh, I've got medium hards. It's medium lap 12 here, so... Yeah, 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 no problem. Now we don't really have to care about tires, Jimmy. You just have to drive, because we are an optimal strategy. We don't have really difficulties on the rear. So just drive and try to do what you do better. And I don't have to speak. I'm just here to to help you if you need any help. But good luck and, and, and do what you know. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. That is a fascinating team radio. That sounds like whoever that radio engineer is wants to pop off and have dinner. So just gone, <laughs> look, you drive. I've got a roast in the oven. I'm going to deal with that. You deal with Baku. All yeah, right. We'll, have, it. we'll have a chat if you do well at the end. <laughs> Jimmy wanted to discuss tires. He wanted to discuss Don't worry strategy. About them. Just drive better. I've got some roast potatoes on the go. I can't <laughs> do that at the moment. Uh, ben Daly, uh, who is in the McLaren. Uh, in P8. Now, he won a race that you were taking part in a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, yeah, that could yeah, it was the challenge race. I mean, that could have been was. you. It could have been I me. Mean, I don't, I don't, uh, don't want to labour this point too much, but... I'm not currently looking at a simulator that's in the studio and I've been waiting for the call-up ever since, but that's fine. Yeah, Tim Amadek, Ben Daly, he, uh, he won the challenge event a few weeks ago. And, uh, yeah, he's one of, one of my friends. I've known him for, for many, many years. An amazing F1 YouTuber and content creator. He's stuck at it since F1 2010. As the Mercedes behind him of Anthony Davidson runs a little bit wide. But, yeah, Ben Daly, he loves this game. And to be fair to him, I, I wanted actually him to be a bit further up because he's played this game probably more than anybody on this field put together. Uh, but, yeah, PA, he's running OK. He's never... He's not a self-proclaimed master of the game, but uh, he makes some very entertaining content. And he might be able to make some more content as Mercedes dives up his inside into turn one. And see Davidson looking for the move. Doesn't have the momentum this time, but it's going to be very, very close by the time that they get through this. Turn number two, and they head down another DRS zone to turn number three. It is a 1.5 second gap, meanwhile, at the front. Can Ben keep Anthony behind? Let's find out. It's going to be very, very close indeed, especially with DRS. You can see the gap coming down still. As he doesn't feel like he can send one to the inside, playing the long game. Uh, Pierre Gasly has come into the pits, another one 
of the F1 drivers making their debut in the virtual Grand Prix today. Just got there in time. And uh, Enzo Fittipaldi getting past Laporte up to 16th after that moment that dropped him down to the very back of the field. 2.1 seconds now the gap with George Russell ahead of Alex Albon, but nowhere near what we saw two weeks ago where he'd checked out by now and uh, just rubbed it in. A nearly 40-second margin George Russell won by last time around. Hopefully we'll get more of a battle for the lead as the race progresses. For the moment, though, we're continuing to watch the battle. Ah, here is our race leader. And we can hear, I believe, team radio for the guy who is showing them the pace right now. Once again, in the same pace as some Formula One esports pro drivers. Good job, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Well, that's pretty good. You're not only leading the race, but you're getting close to uh, esports pace. So that was just more of a here you go, mate. Just massaging the ego. <laughs> that was uh, just giving a bit of confidence to George. As I said, as I mentioned in qualifying, uh, I was astounded with his 37.1, and then he pops in a 36.8, which is as <laughs> as his uh, engineer said the F1 eSports driver's pace, and they're on default setup, so they're not as quick uh, as uh, they would be if they've, they've custom made it, but that's to make it as accessible as possible for all the drivers involved. So George Russell, an absolute class of his own right now, as Alex Albon has uh, come into the pits, I believe. I wasn't actually looking at the screen, but I imagine he has. He's, he's in P5 at the moment, and yet on the hard compounder tyres. Will we see a different strategy? Will George Russell continue on and then maybe try and pop on the mediums? I don't think so. It'd be a bit too risky. Uh, but right now, if he continues to eke his advantage out, can we get like a button made or something on the, <laughs> so like a big red button on our commentary desk yeah. just to, to turn on the safety car? Yeah, that, perfect. That would be, be really good. Perfect. I've heard that suggested before. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinklers as well. That would be good. Uh, Anthony Davidson still can't get past Ben. He's still looking at the back of the McLaren's rear wing. So frustration for uh, the driver who does a lot of sim work for Mercedes. Former Formula One driver as well, with 24 F1 races to his name. But right now, the uh, content creator uh, showing him the way around this circuit. And Jimmy Broadbent, 2.5 seconds behind, but running in the top 10. Ah, three second time penalty for Ben Daly there. So those positions in reality switch round. Uh, Alex Albon decided to come into the pits last time around, put a little bit of pressure on the driver he is racing for the win today. That's George Russell who's come in along with Esteban Gutierrez. We go on board with the race leader. Lap number eight, it's all gone to plan so far. Time for a change of tyre. There's the mediums. So he's gone a different way to Alex Albon. Now the strategy hasn't always paid off for the tie driver in the last couple of weeks, but it looks like it's paying off there. He's closer than he was, but he's not able right now to, uh, well, it's the maintained lead for the driver we're on board with, George Russell, uh, doing enough on the in-laps, and uh, he will hope to do more of the same. And he's got the softer compounded tire. Look at uh, the rear gunner as well with Nicholas Latifi in P2, who hasn't pitted yet, but will very much be a roadblock, I imagine, to Alex Albon just behind. It's uh, Javi Guerra, is uh, George Russell's uh, team radio engineer and uh, ego massager. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to say that that is his actual title because he does a lot of work with the uh, Williams eSports drivers and is very talented in, in that area. So I imagine the medium compound tyres is the way to go. Clearly, he thinks that... George Russell can go 18 laps on those medium tyres as Enzo Fittipaldi gets a three-second time penalty from our P16. So it's not really going to affect too many positions for him. But uh, right now, Tim at Marduk running in P4, but hasn't pitted either. So there's varying strategies, as we've seen before in the previous ones, and I love to see it. Tell you what I love to see. I know you're meant to be unbiased, but given the situation the team's in at the moment, Williams 1-2. Just stop the race now. That'll do. There we are. Williams 1 2. George Russell That's ahead another of button that we need on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> you, just want, you just want to be race control. Buttons. You just want race control power, don't you? We'll see. We'll see if you can get that for the final outing. Even a pretend one. <laughs> George Russell leading his teammate and Nicholas Latifi in P2. You can see the lead for Russell ahead of Albon is sizable. Ben Daly in fourth place, then Ant Davidson still behind, still within a second. Esteban Gutierrez getting past Anthony Davidson, his teammate for today. And so moving up to fifth, we'll see if the Mexican driver can shift uh, Mr. Daly out of the way slightly faster. Lando Norris has improved past Jimmy Broadbent, and still the Williamses lead the entire field. It's just like the late 90s right now. Domination from the blue and white cars.
It is amazing to see. And the fact that Latifi is just behind Russell, it's almost like George can actually uh, pull his teammate through as well uh, with using the DRS and Latifi, actually pretty decent pace. You're having a look right now at the P13 driver. That's Thibaut Courtois, the Real Madrid uh, goalkeeper, has been speaking to us earlier in the weekend. We can hear from him now. Hello, everyone. It's Thibaut Courtois here, enjoying a lot racing today in the F1 Virtual GP of Azerbaijan in Baku. And I hope I can beat my, uh, my football colleagues. Thank you for watching. He's very much part of the woodwork, isn't he now, Thibaut Courtois? Yes. He's been involved in a lot of the virtual GPs, and it's great to see that He's really enjoying himself as well. So, and to be fair, he's done a pretty solid job as well. He hasn't rocked up and been two minutes off the pace. He's very much in the midfield, fighting with Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc in this race. So, <laughs> hats off to Thibaut Courtois. And there's his uh, goalkeeping rival in in the in real life and and right now today on the racetrack the Gianluigi uh, Donnarumma, the AC Milan goalkeeper, making his way uh, slightly cleaner through. Uh, <laughs> through turn 15 and Sergio Perez behind who had a similar moment to that back in the very first year that we raced here uh, back when it was called the European Grand Prix but Donnarumma uh, made his debut as a teenager for such a famous team such a big team massive Formula One fan and racing in the Alfa Tauri uh, to right now a very respectable pace uh, with a pit stop to come though two seconds the gap between Russell and Albon, so Alex Albon very much has steadied that, that advantage that George Russell's had and is on the harder tyres. So, going to be intriguing to see how the time difference changes towards the end of the race as we see Laporte. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal defender, Americ Laporte, and uh, it's going to be good to see the football uh, resuming in a few moments' time. Good to have him on the grid, oh. but that's going to... Uh, well, that's not ideal to put it in that part of the racetrack. Thankfully, though, the card ghosting and we have no pile-up like we've seen at that corner for many years. Uh, learning the track as he goes, I think, is, is the safest description as that one. But great to have such an elite sports person in the field. Yeah, and it's been amazing to see across the, the, the last Grand Prix that we've had, you know, all sorts of amazing star-studded names that I just remember refreshing Twitter and going, oh, who now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's here? It's, it's unbelievable to see. And I also found incredible the fact that George Russell and Alex Albon went through the castle section completely unfazed that there was a Renault just sat there at the apex of the corner. And they just drove through. No, no twitches, nothing, didn't hit the wall. They are so in the zone, those two. And speaking of the zone, George Russell slightly more so, as it now is three seconds, the gap, as he starts to bed in his medium compound tyres. And we look at Anthony Davidson having a pretty decent race in P6, but is he yet to stop? Six seconds or so behind Tim at Marduk, the F1 YouTuber content creator who's just dived into the pits. There's Delatraz, who was running quite far up the field, but he's dropped down to 17th now, gets a penalty. So analysing... The table's turned on Anthony Davidson. We're analysing him, rather than him dishing it out to the good and the great of Formula One. And he's not too far away from Esteban Gutierrez. Gutierrez has really found his form as... Uh, as this has progressed, improved all the way through. Uh, had good pace initially, but his two best results coming in the last two Grand Prix. Not quite on the searing pace of Russell and Albon, but uh, right now on board with Anthony Davidson, who is uh, just following in his uh, fellow Mercedes Sim drivers' wheel tracks right now. I was hoping to watch a little bit more of Anthony Davidson there because you could actually see his car as well, although it was looking like slightly slow motion because due to his camera. But it was great to watch him and uh, coming through the castle section. Now it's frightening. Absolutely. <laughs> Every time I see it, I never get used to seeing the cars go through that section. And uh, well, it seems like pretty much everybody is getting through there unscathed as TM at Marduk gets a three second time penalty for most likely corner cutting. <laughs> what a surprise. What a shocker. He is known for sometimes having a little corner cut or two in his career mode episodes and he's brought it to the virtual Grand Prix as well. Lovely, Ben. <laughs> Let's check in with Pierre Gasly, using a little bit of the wall, using a lot of the wall, and heading round. Let's hear from Team Radio from the driver who's just produced that rather, rather dainty little spin. Marcel, you. you need to find me the, the best strategy ever, mate. I will, I will. We need to recover this mess. 
I yeah, imagine Ma that was probably before he had his spin. Yeah, I mean, Marcel's good, but he's... <laughs> Make, give me about a minute or so. <laughs> it, it, Do you know stretching. any cheat codes? You have the super-duper ultra-softs to pop on, but no. Unfortunately for Pierre Gasly, it's not gone too well. But it uh, sounds like he's still having fun, having a bit of banter with his engineers. Yeah, and for a driver who's also been uh, using... Uh, he's been go-karting, he's not had a chance to uh, take delivery of the sim for a, for a while, so he's getting up to speed. A driver who is very familiar with sim racing is Lando Norris, who's going past Anthony Davidson. Nice move for him, a driver who's been testing a uh, Formula 3 car, he's been go-karting, uh, Alex Albon has been doing that as well, and he's using that move as yet more preparation as we build up to the return of Formula 1. Now up to P4, very solid indeed. Remember, Lando Norris's uh, best finish overall in the virtual Grand Prix was a fifth place in the very first one when he was colliding with Jimmy Paul Bent at the final corner. Good old Bahrain, that seems ages ago now. But right now, yeah, Lando's, as you say, P4, running pretty strongly indeed, showing the pace that he does have in this game after he's fixed all his gremlins and had time to make that wonderful helmet. <laughs> as uh, he comes on to the back straight now, he looks pretty comfortable in P4, and it looks quite comfortable for a lot of the guys at the moment. There's gaps that have formed over the course of, well, after the bit of carnage we had in the first few laps, but I imagine the strategy will start to close some of these battles back up. Uh, especially with the uh, hards and mediums that are changing as Charles Leclerc, his race goes from bad to worse, and that is going to be a little bit of a pain for Lando Norris that Anthony Davidson takes the position back into Turn 1. He hasn't stopped yet on those medium compounded tyres, so Lando has to make the move again. That will be hugely frustrating for Lando Norris, but he'll take a deep breath, he'll go again. We ride on board with the British driver heading into his second season of Formula 1 and trying to put the move back last of the late breakers and finds a way through. So back up to P4. Yep, just about makes it stick. Back up to P4. And the gap at the front now, 4.3 seconds between Russell and Albon. Alex Albon, who won brilliantly in Brazil, doesn't at this stage of proceedings appear to have an answer, but still a long way to go. We've seen what happened to Pierre Gasly. Whilst the damage is off, it is very easy to spin on the tight confounds, especially at this very part of the racetrack. Charles Leclerc is going to have to get a move on. P12, championship on the line, which we found out. <laughs> uh, the three points between himself and George Russell, which means it will be a title decider no matter what. Uh, but right now, Charles Leclerc not scoring any points whatsoever. Down in P12, this place just isn't kind to him, it seems, or at least in recent years. He did have an amazing result um, in the Sauber, I believe, a few years prior to his uh, crash in quali. Uh, but right now, P12, four seconds behind Jimmy Broadbent as we take a look at George Russell and some team radio. Alex isn't dropping away as much as I hoped on that hard. Yeah, we need to push now. We need to push. Oh, spicy. Okay. So, like he's that. not as comfortable as it might appear right now. Uh, they expect... We haven't seen the dramatic gaps between tyre compounds uh, in the same way that we would in real life. Now, we, we saw that earlier in the F2 race. It was slightly more pronounced around here. Will that give a chance for Alex Albon later on? Meanwhile, Thibaut Courtois and Jimmy Broadbent. That position changing hands up to 10th position for Jimmy Broadbent. That's a nice move. He's made his way, and that is on the same strategy. Uh, nice move on the alpha for track position. And uh, he moves into the top 10. There he is, the shed dweller himself. <laughs> Great to see him involved in the virtual GP once again. Don't you just love that whiteboard? Share your passion. Enjoy yourself. It's OK to make mistakes, smiley face. It's just <laughs> brilliant. And uh, quite recently, actually, I saw a bit of content on his YouTube channel where someone created his shed that he lives in. Right. And he drove around the Nordschleife in the shed. And it had a V8 in it, and it was the, one of the craziest bit of content I've seen in a while. So uh, that's the sort of stuff that Jimmy Broadbent gets involved in, and it's great to see him running in P10. Only eight seconds off uh, F1 YouTuber team at Marduk, and uh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's done very well indeed. He's in his overalls as well. He's absolutely loving life, it has to be said. And he's got a pretty impressive rig uh, to go with that as well, which you would imagine uh, from a sim racer and sim YouTuber. So running in the top 10, I'd be very happy with that. Pietro Fittipaldi, not too far away from Anthony Davidson right now. So, P 
Pietro Fittipaldi, who took pole by riding the rails around that final uh, sector in Monaco. We don't talk about that, Alex. No, we don't. No, it's fine. It didn't happen. No. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what did happen. That pass on Anthony Davidson and up to P5 with the use of DRS. So he moves forward again. And Anthony Davidson doing his best to uh, clobber the wall. No damage, though, so we'll get away with it. There are seven seconds between Esteban Gutierrez uh, and Alex Albin, you can see there. Alex Albin, uh, 4.3 seconds away from the race leader, George Russell, but on the harder compound of tyre, Pietro Fittipaldi on that same compound of tyre, on the white wall, hard tyre in fifth place. So let's focus on Alex Albin and the driver who has been concerning George Russell. I believe we can hear from him now on the team radio. Alex, continue, continue. Push hard, push hard, keep it consistent. Like, oh literally, God. just focus. Well, easier said than done, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, push harder, keep it consistent. So clearly... P push hard, keep it consistent. Close down to George, <laughs> pass George, win the race. Yeah, Alex didn't know these things until he was told them on the radio. Uh, it's interesting, though, that clearly Williams and George Russell, they're not as comfortable as it may seem. Four seconds gap, but as I mentioned before, Alex Albin on the hard tyres, George Russell on the mediums. So clearly they wanted to push early in the stint, did George Russell, but he hasn't got the gap maybe that they're comfortable with. So. I would expect to see Alex Albon over the next 11 laps to close in on the race leader and potentially give us a fight for the lead. There's Sergio Perez on his ultra-wide <laughs> screen monitor. We can almost see the whole, <laughs> whole screen and it just comes round. It's great to see him involved there and very much in the zone. Look at it, he's not blinking at all. Yeah, great to see Checo involved in this as he makes his way through the most precarious corner on the racetrack. No pizza in sight. <laughs> which is a, definitely a good thing, <laughs> given the topping choice. And trying to keep Louis Delatraz behind. Delatraz, who's shown good form and uh, gone very well in the F2 virtual races, having trouble earlier on, f tumbling down the order, and he will be hoping to overtake uh, Sergio. He's definitely got the pace from what we've seen earlier in the weekend. Just a case of lining up the pass, as it's a wide line, but one that works for the Mexican driver. Uh, we're on lap 16 and 26. There's different tyre strategies between George Russell and Alex Albon out front as we check in with one of the Formula 1 drivers making their debut and trying to keep that house behind. Bit of old school toe braking going on. Weaving left, weaving right. It's not going to be enough though. And Delatraz with the DRS manages to pull ahead, gets a tap for his trouble. How dare you? He's managed to get through though. And Delatraz up to P16. I thought that uh, Delatraz might be ending up in the wall there with how, <laughs> how much Sergio just, just dropped him a, a little a nudge in the in the rear end there, but manages to get through unscathed pretty much. There's Oscar Piastri, still running in P6, closing in on Pietro Fittipaldi. Seven tenths of a second, they're on exactly the same tyre strategy. Nine laps into their hard stint. And you can see at the top there, the, the strategy that we've been talking about. George Russell, eight laps on the mediums. Alex Albon, much more durable, hard tyres, nine laps. As Charles Leclerc, another three-second time penalty. You can pretty much write out, write off any hopes of getting any points. I, I don't think Tom and Natalie can be speaking to Charles after this race. No, I, I, don't, I don't think we'd be able to broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he has enough time for it to soak in. It's not right at the end like it was uh, in Spain. I think it was for George Russell and, and, and that sort of stuff. But either way, Oscar Piastri still closing in on Fittipaldi, and it looks like he has the pace advantage at the moment in the Renault. Yeah, identical strategies, identical tyres right now, though. Piastri with a lot of confidence. It's gone well around this uh, six-kilometre circuit. DRS open. Now, is he going to try and make the move here? If not, you have to wait a while until you've got that opportunity. He knows it, but he doesn't have the momentum. Two exciting young drivers close on the racetrack, but unable to make the pass. And so he might have to try a bit of a risky one. Anything from here realistically until you get to turn 12 would be defined as a seriously risky one crazy in fact <laughs> yeah that would be crazy Charles Leclerc's in the pits again it's for his two-stop strategy he's on the soft compound attire the only thing he's going for now is fastest lap but unfortunately no points for that uh, if you're out of the top 10 and at all unless in this theoretical championship there there are giving out <laughs> they are giving out fastest lap points well I'm not sure it existed until a couple of days yeah, ago so, 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 so yeah, make any maybe. rules up yeah it might be 25 points for the fastest lap we don't know super serious championship we're taking seriously yes 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 yeah theoretically and it's George Russell about to take the lead of that championship after a superb performance so far Another three-second time penalty for Laporte. And, well, 
Uh, he was concerned about Albon's pace on the hard tyre, but he got the gap up to 4.7. Albon just getting it down to 4.4. We are understandably looking at the battle for P5, though. On board with the Renault. Part of the Driver Academy. It's gone very well in the virtual world today. He's about to go even better. Moving up to fifth position, Oscar Piastri having the time of his life around this circuit. He's got the move done. He's picked his braking spot and fifth place belongs to him as long as he can get the exits for the next couple of corners where he needs them to be. Fittipaldi knows he needs to fight back absolutely immediately and he'll try to do so with DRS. Here we go then. Goes very defensive indeed, trying to break the toe. And Fittipaldi, if he's last of the late breakers, oh, that's going to be very close indeed. One of those moves that makes you wince, but the outside line becomes the inside. Still nothing they can do, and Fittipaldi didn't have the belief to carry on around there. Maybe didn't have the grip either. Oscar Piastri does now have P5. Great little battle there, nice to see. Piastri, as you say, living the dream, winning the F2 race, and currently in the top five of the F1 Virtual Grand Prix. Still four and a half seconds to the, uh, the battle at the front. Alex Albon still not closing in. I'm sure he'll be getting all sorts of team radio messages saying to push harder, be more consistent, be quicker, win the race. <laughs> but unfortunately, the gap continues to extend out. When do those medium tyres start to fall away? Here is George Russell, and the gap is astronomical. There is Alex Albon. It's quite nice, though, on the back straight that Alex Albon will still be able to see George, even though it's, it's, it's extremely long. So it'll give him some hope that he hasn't completely disappeared off. There you go. You can see Alex Albon in the background as we come into turn one for the 19th time with George Russell. Tell you what, if you're worried that Alex Albon's going to settle for P2, you can absolutely bet he won't. Of all the people he would not want to be beaten by, it's the man that's been taking him out of various <laughs> races oh, yeah. all the way through this uh, slightly strange lockdown period. And uh, so Albon will be giving it everything until the very last lap to try and close down the gap. His main hope right now is that those yellow-walled medium tyres disappear. Uh, in terms of the pace, not in terms of the way that Mr. Laporte has just done. But, uh, well, we'll see. We haven't seen as dramatic drop-off like that at any point of the virtual Grand Prix uh, series that we've run. Maybe today's the day. This is not yet a done deal for George Russell. Anthony Davidson finally comes into the pits after an eternity on those medium compounder tyres, so he has definitely scrapped the uh, predicted pit stop strategy and just gone from mediums to softs. I cannot imagine how much he was skating around on those soft tyres. And here's Anthony Davidson on those super, uh, super soft softs, in, in fact, right behind Thibaut Courtois for P9. This is the tyre difference we've been waiting for. Yeah. The actual, you can see the grip that Anthony Davison has over Courtois. He sends one up the inside. That's going to be so close. Surely it's single file through there. No, what a move from Davidson. Super traction, and that is ninth place in the possession of Anthony Davidson after making it work. So that's the sort of difference that George Russell is worried about, that Alex Albon is hoping for. Won't be that extreme, though. Doesn't have access to that tyre, but will the medium fall away? It is going to be the answer to that question, which decides which way this virtual Grand Prix goes. Jimmy Broadbent trying to find a way past Thibaut Courtois right now. This rapid section plunging downhill all the way down to the sea. Turn 16 coming up. And the exit there is going to be crucial. Pierre Gasly has a five-second time penalty for exceeding track limits and trying to move out of 11th place and take 10th. It's difficult to do it at the sweepers there. We saw that in qualifying between uh, Jimmy Broadbent, and I forget who that was in qualifying, but it was a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel banging. And here we go now for the racing point from Mr. Broadbent, and he's up to 10th position past Thibaut Courtois, who has been pretty strong, you have to say, Considering, oh, comment. <laughs> there don't, it is. No, 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 there no, it is, don't finally. say it, don't Usually say it. me, it's now you. <laughs> oh, the commentator's curse. No, hold on, I don't want, don't give me the commentator's <laughs> curse. The real season is about to begin again. Sorry about that, Tebow. That's, uh, that's on me. Um, he has been so impressive up until that point. Unfortunately, he was uh, visiting more of the scenery, as was Alex Albin, leaving the tyre maker's name on the wall. <laughs> And 4.5 seconds is the gap to George Russell. We're ticking down. It looks like it's going to be three in a row. It looks like it's going to be the brand new championship lead 
for the Williams driver, but can Albon push in the hard tyres in a way that his good mate cannot? Oscar Piastri has a five-second penalty. It's disappointing for him. Pietro Fittipaldi will leapfrog him as things stand as we're into the latter stages. I was about to say it was going to be potentially interesting for P4 as Lando Norris racks up a three-second time penalty of his own, but then Oscar Piastri, only a few corners later, gets a five-second penalty. So that battle, battle is now over, but that could promote Pietro Fittipaldi unless he has a penalty. I remember Latifi definitely has a three-second time penalty at the very least. So we could see a few jostling and juggling for positions after the 26 laps here around Baku. And here's George Russell, 4.3 seconds. The gap isn't coming down enough for Alex Albon to have a sniff of victory here. Right, George Russell was concerned earlier on about the tyres he was on. I believe we can hear more team radio for an update on that situation. Uh, it's just so annoying, that gap is not getting any bigger at all. <laughs> I'm worried about no the tyre. No, we've got worries. 44% rear right. So, Matt, put that into context for us. Would that be worrying you? I think he's worrying a bit too much, to be yeah. honest. 44% uh, rear right. Obviously, it means the tyres are going to start to fall away. He's, he's concerned that by lap 26, it hits the cliff. Yeah, because that's when it really falls away from you and seconds can fall away. And Alex Albon is right on your rear, rear diffuser. But, in fact, he's got 44% of his rear right and Alex Albon is now five and a half seconds behind. So, I think Alex has made some sort of mistake in that red ball. And I don't know, maybe just George has got used to winning by 40 seconds, like he did in Monaco, <laughs> and he's, oh, five and a half, oh, is that it? Uh, I think he's pretty safe at the moment after that mistake from Albon. 5.4 seconds the gap now. So he's just easing the car through. You can see he's still super intense in terms of the expression there. Wants to bring this one home, wants to take the championship lead, wants to beat Alex Albon. Esteban Gutierrez uh, all by himself at the moment with a decent buffer to Lando Norris, who will be trying to close down that gap. But the tyres, 44%, not ideal, but not causing anywhere near the problems. And, well, Albon will be hoping the cliff edge approaches soon because he just hasn't seemed to have the pace in the last five laps or so. So what's won this race for George Russell? It's not only his pace, obviously that's, that's evident, but... He's one of the only people that went soft mediums. Uh, the only other person was Anthony Davidson. He's gone 18 laps on the mediums. We don't know his team radio as to whether or not he was crying to come into the pits <laughs> at the end of that stint, but it is possible. Anthony Davidson didn't get any sort of punctures or had any major spins from uh, tire life. So it is possible for George Russell to get to the end on those mediums. It's just how hard has he pushed those rears, especially, as you say, the, uh, the right rear. 44% is going to be continuing to degrade over these next few laps as the, uh, the gap does come under five seconds now, but it's just, it's not enough from Alex Albon to really start to mount on the pressure, even though George Russell seems to be mounting on the pressure himself uh, because he hasn't got a three minute lead. So Albon, a winner of this race in Formula Two. Same applies to George Russell, same applies to the driver you're looking at right now, Charles Leclerc. Bit of a quiet day by his lofty standards. Uh, considering how well he went earlier on, but the, the balance of power has shifted from Charles Leclerc to George Russell mm. in the course of the events that we've we've run. A victory in Australia and uh, China for Charles Leclerc, and then oh, podiums. Alex Albon, three-second time penalty. Ah, and that will do it. That will do it for the battle for the lead. So Charles Leclerc having a, a rare off day, and Alex Albon, who is... Uh, unfortunately got that three second time penalty so it seems a good a time as ever to check in with jimmy broadbent come on jimmy that's really good just keep the pace at the moment we cannot arrive forward so keep it smooth and clean and top 10 starting last is an amazing result come on surprised i didn't hear a mouthful from the the roast dinner that the engineer was having <laughs> but either way Still positive energy uh, to Jimmy Broadbent. And yeah, as you say, a great, well, as he says, a great result for Jimmy currently. 
He's four seconds ahead of Pierre Gasly. I'm sure he'll take that, a current F1 driver, or two, three current F1 drivers he's beating on the road. As we take a look once again, he's even wearing his, his gloves as well. He's properly taken this seriously. <laughs> that's that's one thing I, I do str struggle to, to comprehend is the gloves part of things. But maybe that's just because I'm not on the sim enough that uh, that my hands start to fall off. I don't know. <laughs> but, but great, great result from Jimmy. Um, ahead of a driver who's finished on the podium, the world's most expensive goalkeeper, a fitter Powdy, a two-time Formula One Grand Prix winner, an eight-time podium finisher, the AC Milan goalkeeper, an F2 virtual race winner, and a pretty handy centre-back for Man City. I think you've just titled his next YouTube video. <laughs> there we go. So he's uh, provided us with a lot of entertainment and always a charge in the race, almost every single time. Hates qualifying, loves racing. And I think that uh, pretty much sums Jimmy up pretty nicely indeed as he says yeah uh, the, the race engineer no way forward because it's anthony davidson on soft tires meanwhile just behind we have a fight for 11th place between gasly and courtois again it's just so weird to say that out loud <laughs> isn't it it's so strange but great to watch oh gasly oh, gets another penalty yeah no so he's ahead of courtois on track but the timing page will say something different this could be one of the better battles. 4.2 uh, seconds, 4.1 seconds, the battle for the lead. But it's going to take a real cliff edge for George Russell's tyres, a cliff edge that I just don't think is going to happen, but uh, we've proved wrong before. Courtois with a super exit from turn 16, super momentum, DRS, and now the position. 11th place for the Belgian international, and he comes down to the breaking zone of turn one with that firmly in his possession. Uh, but great to have Pierre Gasly with us for the first time in a virtual Grand Prix. And Enzo Fittipaldi, the young Ferrari driver, Academy driver, alongside Charles Leclerc, who will be scratching his head at this one. But he will, at the very least, want to use that tyre compound advantage and DRS to get past his teammate. Yeah, the strange, the strange story of Charles Leclerc in the virtual GPs. He's gone from dominating to down in P14, fighting his teammate Enzo Fittipaldi, which I'm sure he did not imagine coming into this, but maybe he just got a bit complacent. He, he just thought, yeah, I'm easily top three, top four. I could just rock up and, and do, have a pretty decent result. Now, it's a, very much an awakening result, I imagine, for Charles Leclerc. It'd be great to see him come back in the final virtual Grand Prix and really give George Russell a run for his money out in front. Halfway through that, I was thinking, is Matt... Is Matt criticising Charles Leclerc? Hey, I'm completely unbiased. I'm just passionate. <laughs> That's it. As he gets another three-second time penalty. Well, it's not a great commentator's curse, but it's not as bad as the Courtois one from <laughs> earlier on for me. Uh, 3.9 seconds now. Penultimate lap of the virtual Grand Prix. Battle between the Ferraris. And uh, issue for Thibaut Courtois there, heading backwards. So that allows Enzo up to 12th place. Here's Lando Norris. Not quite going to make his way to the podium. Uh, only 3.9 seconds away. But a picture of concentration as he makes it into turn five and turn six. This will be his best result in the virtual Grand Prix. And now it won't be after you saying that, Alex, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, he does have a penalty, but so does Piastri. So something uh, very strange would have to happen for Lando to be displaced of fourth position. You can see by his just absolute concentration face he's taking this very seriously indeed and it's great to see we don't ever get to see the emotions of formula one drivers as they wear helmets uh, racing around which is obviously great but uh, this is nice uh, a different kind of side to them isn't it to see them all streaming and it's been a, a very pleasant few months in some ways uh, from all the dark things that have been happening in the world it's great to see these these drivers come together uh, and create some entertaining pieces of content and uh, lando norris being one of them and we're looking forward to the, the final virtual Grand Prix as we start the final lap of the penultimate one. Absolutely. The drivers have given us a, a different perspective. We've seen a lot more of their character. It's been great to hear them racing each other. We've discovered who they are as people. We have another race to come your way, as Matt says, this time next week. But it will be a final race of this championship that George Russell will have the points lead for. Um, went for a different strategy to Alexander Albon, was concerned all the way through, but he's nursed those tyres and he's going to take the medium compound and the Williams if he can negotiate the final few corners of this precarious old racetrack and he's going to take it to victory. The flame towers in the distance there, but he has been a driver on fire. Alex Albon is going to get within four seconds, but it's not going to be enough. He would need a few more laps 
And George Russell, dominant stuff from him in qualifying. Was he going to back it up? Well, he got through turn one. That is always so important. Then he got out of DRS, a big early lap, got out of DRS range. And then from there, he has just eased that gap further and further out of range of Alban. And so he is bringing it round the university, round the Opera House and downhill to victory. Just the flat out section to go after turn 16. So George Russell who took a slightly fortuitous victory in Spain, followed it up with a dominant performance in Monaco. George Russell's about to make it three in a row at a track he absolutely loves. He's going to love it even more. He's going to beat Alexander Albon to the victory. George Russell can see the chequered flag, and the British driver crosses the line to win on the streets of Baku after dominating once again. He takes the championship lead heading into the final race of the season. And it's three in a row for George Russell. Unbelievable drive from George Russell. He didn't like the fact that it was Albon versus Leclerc. Everybody was talking about those two. George went away, put in some practice, realized he is actually pretty damn quick. And he has three on the trot. Unbelievable drive. A Williams on the top step. Looking down the camera, the smile breaks onto the face, immediately onto his phone, potentially to gloat to Alex. <laughs> I think that's coming at some point. A really strong drive from Alex Albon in P2. Esteban Gutierrez returning to the podium once again for the third race in a row. He has found form. Lando Norris, his PB in the virtual Grand Prix with fourth place and a strong performance on debut for Oscar Piastri to complete the top five. Nicholas Latifi once again in the top 10. Pietro Fittipaldi going nicely in P6. Well done, Ben Daly in eighth position, just ahead of Anthony Davidson, who went for the alternate strategy. And Jimmy Broadbent rounds out the top 10. Great to see. Charles Leclerc down in P14. Yeah, a very, very strange day for him, but the day once again belonged to George Russell. Well, thank you very much uh, to Matt Gallagher and Alex Jays. Entertaining uh, throughout. Loved hearing them, Natalie. Um, and, and what a race it was. And, and I have to say, let's start with George Russell. Three rins back to back. Even a kiss and a pout to the camera. And, and, a, and a sort of triumphant feeling he must have right now, knowing that he's on form. Do you think he was feigning that anxiety about the tyre strategy? Because for me, that was such an assured, calm performance. And uh, there he is. Look at him. Yeah, he broke his sweat. He didn't seem to be, but he, he was very concerned. It, it, I think it was lap 21 of 26. He said there was a 40% uh, rear um, back wheel sort of uh, degradation. degradation on mm. him. And um, and uh, as Matt very funnily said, you know, he's used to winning by 40 seconds. That's the problem. But <laughs> but it was sort of neck and neck. But he never, he sort of, like you say, he never seemed to have, have broken into a sweat and a real panic. Mm. But maybe he did put that on a little bit. However, he was backed up by Alex Albon right behind him. And Marcel Kiefer on the team radio trying to get the best out of him. Wasn't so able to do that for Pierre Gasly, though, no. uh, unfortunately, on his debut. Well, I think that uh, George Russell did very well to stay out of the chaos at the start. He had a good start. So did Alex Albon, but not as good, obviously, as George. But yet, yeah, a very calm performance, very assured. And uh, I'm no doubt he'll be delighted to get that hat-trick of wins. He's got a 22-point championship lead now with just one race to go. Yeah, uh, in this championship, we're calling it suddenly, even though there isn't really a championship. But, however, I would never take that away from any of the drivers. Uh, let's have a look at the classification then uh, as things uh, are finally uh, decided. Um, and there you have it there, Charles Leclerc. I mean, that, that mm. surprises me a lot right down there from the Monegaskian uh, in 14th. We expected... I suppose it unfairly, we expect always the high quality uh, from Charles Leclerc, but Baku not being his race. And as you say, he got caught up early doors mm. uh, in, in a situation. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that that hasn't helped him. And unfortunately, not able to get back in. And then penalties going against him as well. I mean, I don't think it's unfair to expect a lot from Charles Leclerc because he is such a magnificent racer, both in the real and virtual world. And he's been building up some very strong results. And he will have wanted to get to uh, Baku and put in a strong performance. He's had, you know, some issues there last year in the real world. And again, this time, race to forget, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, and P4 for the one and only Mr Lando Norris. We've been sort of throughout the virtual Grand Prix uh, for everybody. There's been technical issues for him. But finally, uh, he is able to get P4, Lando Norris. Yeah. Surely this is a celebration <laughs> for you, Lando. <laughs> it is. I'm popping the champagne already. Uh, this is like a win for me, you know, so a win is just <laughs> seeing the checkered flag. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I was I was worried I wasn't going to make it to the end because I, I ran into several problems pre-race. Um, 
but yeah, the team um, of I uh, managed to get it all together <laughs> and do a good do a good job. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy with P4. There's uh, no I in team, but there's a me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I did mention earlier, Lando. It doesn't look like you've you've moved in 24 hours from where you are right 24 now. 24 hours? Yeah, About but four months. <laughs> oh, for the, literally for the last however long True. this lockdown has been going on. But finally, uh, you were able to do that. You talked about degradation and a few problems. George Russell is also in the shot with you at the moment. George, congratulations. Three in, in a row. Thank you. Natalie said, though, maybe you were feigning a little bit acting, saying you were really worried about those tyres uh, in lap 21, <laughs> <laughs> and they might start falling Is away. It... What was really going through your head, George? It, well, I think that's been learning from Lewis. So, uh, I thought that's what people do when they win. You've got to pretend the tyres are going away, and you look like a hero <laughs> at the end when you uh, <laughs> you hold them through the rest of the race. So, no, honestly, I was I was a bit worried because I obviously went onto the medium. Alex went onto the hard, and all. Ordinarily, you'd expect me to to gap him quite a lot in the early phase of the race, but he stayed with me. I'm like, oh no, he's gonna <laughs> come back at the end. But he was fast, to be fair to him. I think we was quite a long way ahead of the next one, but uh, no, enjoyed it, enjoying it all, and uh, yeah, good to win. Never, never in doubt, George. Never in doubt. How how does this winning feeling taste? There, you're gonna want more of this when we get back to the real world, aren't you? <laughs> I'm definitely going to want more of this when I get back to the real world. Not too sure how we'll perform in Austria. I'll definitely do my best, but uh, no promises. I'll be standing on the stop, top step again. Um, I have to say, Lando Norris, any ideas who got the DHL fastest lap? Lando? Yeah, not me. Yeah, sorry about that. It's Louis Delatraz <laughs> who got it. Uh, so con <laughs> congratulations to him. But Cheers. again, P4, Lando. P4. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is an all-time high for me. Um, I've actually put, it's the, the one I put, I would say, most practice into. Um, <laughs> like, I got not, not loads of practice, but I, I've kind of focused on it a little bit because my last few races have been atrocious. Um, so, yeah, I put a bit more time into it, and, and it's paid off. I was P4, I mean, I was P9 in quality, which I wasn't too happy with because I could have done better. But, um, yeah, I managed to, to come through, get a good start and, and finish before. So great results for the team. Yeah, great results for the team. Great <laughs> results for both of you. Thank you very much uh, to Lando. Congratulations to George Russell. We're wrapping things up now. Can I just say, you would never say that to his face if he was in the pen right in front of you, just because you're in the studio. Yeah, there is that distance. Uh, listen, <laughs> Natalie Pingo, thank you so much. Back uh, next week uh, for Canada. Absolutely. Love to be. Thank Perfect. You. Uh, well, there you go. Um, listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much to the commentators, Alex Jakes and Matt Gallagher. There we go. Uh, Baku, Azerbaijan, done and dusted. We move on in seven days' time to Canada. Make sure you come and join us. In the meantime, stay safe, be well, and uh, we hope to see you back here at the Gfinity Arena, the home of F1 Esports, very soon. Four five lights are on. It's all to race for. Oh, he's hit him! He's done it! What oh, he's done it!